Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the new Voyo V1 Mini PC. And what's significant about this is that it is running uh, with Intel's new uh, low-powered architecture called Apollo Lake. This is replacing the Brasswell chips that we've seen in a number of PCs uh, like this one over the last year. And we're going to see uh, how well this one performs against some of those other ones in just a second. Uh, what's interesting about this computer though is that Voyo wants to call it a VMAC Mini, which I don't think Apple is going to be too happy with. So everything that you'll see online when you buy it uh, is called the V1, but for some reason the box uh, says V Mac Mini. Now I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now before we get into the hardware, I do want to give a warning about Voyo the company because uh, their customer service in my experience has been non-existent. They are a Chinese company. They don't seem to respond to inquiries coming from outside of China. So I've had some issues with uh, minor issues uh, with a few of their products in the past and they've never responded to any of my emails and it's been very disappointing. So uh, my recommendation on this one is that uh, likely you will be on your own with it, at least outside of the uh, first couple of weeks of ownership in which the retailer you bought it from might be able to help you. So just be advised, you are uh, not going to get a lot of support for the company. That being said, uh, this is a very nicely designed piece of hardware, probably the nicest uh, hardware I have seen from Voyo yet. Uh, it is all metal, really nice uh, sturdy case here. They've got a couple of different colors available. This is the blue one. I really like the color of this. And the tolerances on the case are really tight. So when I uh, took it apart earlier, I did a video on my extras channel where I did a tear down so you can see how to upgrade it. Uh, you pull off the little feet here and unscrew all the screws and uh, the case just does not come apart. It is really tightly uh, connected here. And I actually had to take a screwdriver and just kind of wedge it into the vent to uh, pry it out. It was actually a very surprisingly nice designed uh, case here that I think you'll be quite pleased with. So that's a good thing. Uh, inside of it is an N4200 Intel Celeron Apollo Lake processor. This is the first Apollo Lake product we're seeing here on the channel. Uh, it's a brand new chipset. It runs at six watts, but it is not fanless. There is a fan that will run on this little computer that uh, will come on quite a bit. And because it's one of those little fans that turns very quickly, it does make some noise. I've seen the fan speed uh, vary based on the loads that I was putting on the computer, but you will hear that fan quite a bit and it will come on quite often whenever you're doing anything with the computer. So just be advised, unlike other mini PCs running with this class of processor, this one is not fanless. It's got four gigabytes of RAM. You can upgrade that to eight gigabytes. It is DDR3. Uh, there is a single slot for upgrading the RAM inside of the motherboard, uh, but you have to pull the old RAM out to put the new RAM in. It is not a dual channel configuration. 128 gigabyte M2 SSD on the motherboard and 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage as well. So you get a C drive and a D drive essentially. They have Windows on that uh, SSD and then they put all the drivers for Windows, which is good because that's been one of my complaints about Voyo in the past was a lack of driver availability. Uh, they put the Windows drivers on that uh, 32 gigabyte partition, but you basically get two partitions when you first boot it up. Uh, you can swap out that SSD. I'll do a quick speed test on it a little later in the video. I suspect they will be changing these components out over time, so the speed you see me do may not be what you get. It might be faster or slower, but you will see what the speed is, at least of this drive, a little later in the review. It can also take a two and a half inch notebook drive, so one of those uh, regular SATA SSDs should fit in here too. There is a, a plug on the motherboard for connecting that up, but they don't give you the cable for it. I suspect that power for that drive will come through that cable, but I don't know where to get one. It might be something, a uh, standard cable out there. So some of you PC experts might know where to get one of those and you can post some links to those down below in the video description. Gigabit ethernet, you've got a, a micro SD card slot here. Your audio output for analog is right there. There's a, a micro HDMI slot there. And what's really nice about this is that they uh, give you the cable in the box to connect it up to a regular monitor. So it's got a micro HDMI to a full size HDMI cable in the box. And there are three USB 3.0 ports on the uh, right hand side here. Now what's interesting is that Wi-Fi is not built into the motherboard on this one. Uh, so you do have to connect an included dongle to get Wi-Fi. So you will uh, need to have something hooked up to one of those USB ports if you want this to go wireless, or of course you can plug in uh, to the ethernet on it. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, get this thing booted up and we'll see how it performs. 
All right, so now we are up and running, and the nice thing is, is that you get a, a fully licensed version of Windows 10 that is activated as part of the price tag here. This one, uh, as configured, costs about $235 right now uh, on the GearVest website. I'm sure they're going to have other configurations, maybe one without the uh, SSD that might cost less in the future. It'd be nice to see actually a bare bones version of this, but uh, you do get that fully licensed version. And uh, the best part is, is that unlike other Chinese uh, computers I have purchased recently, they don't have some administrative super account already set up on it. So many others that I've tried in the past uh, have an administrator account and no UAC. Those little warnings that pop up before you install something that could damage the computer are often disabled on those. Uh, this one starts off from scratch with a uh, Microsoft welcome interface where you have to set up your own accounts and do all of the uh, setup yourself, which is good. And you actually get a completely blank slate of a desktop here as well when you first get the computer going. So there's no junkware on it or anything like that. Uh, we're going to begin our usual uh, test here with the Edge browser looking at uh, YouTube. And there's a reason why I run uh, Edge for YouTube videos, because on some of these mini PCs, it does a lot better than uh, it does on uh, Chrome. But we will do a Chrome benchmark here in a second. I'm just going to turn up this video to 60 frames per second at 1080p so we can see uh, how well this performs here. I'll go into the stats for nerds and get some idea of our frame rate here. And uh, we're not dropping any frames, which is no surprise because the prior generation version of this chip I was able to do 4K and 1080p 60 video without any problems either. So that is a good thing to see there. I will go visit a website real quick and see how fast things pop up on this as well. One of the things that I've noticed is that this feels a lot faster than uh, some of the prior Brasswell chips that were the same class of processor as this one is. And the reason is, is first of all, uh, this one is a quad core chip. So many Brasswell machines were uh, dual core. This one has four cores. So you have uh, you know, the ability to process things in parallel a little faster. So that uh, certainly helps out with things like web browsing when you've got a bunch of you know, things getting rendered and loaded up all at the same time here. So the web browsing feels pretty snappy on it. Uh, and it really is a, a nice little computer to use. It actually reminds me a lot of some of those Chromeboxes and some of those uh, low-cost PCs from HP I looked at about two years ago. It actually feels about the same speed as those did when I'm just zipping around the web. And on the Octane Benchmark Test, which runs in Google Chrome, we can see why this one reminds me a lot of those other computers. We got a score of 12,302, uh, which is pretty much the same score we saw on the Acer Chromebox CXI, as well as the HP Stream Mini and a few other computers I looked at about two years ago. And those were running with a, a version of the Celeron processor that was based on the more powerful desktop class processors. Uh, this one is based on the uh, very power efficient mobile designed Intel processors, and that is why this is so significant, because uh, this is consuming only 6 watts of power compared to 14 or 15 watts of power on those other chips from two years ago. So you can see really where uh, advancements in chip technology is going here. We've got smaller chips that consume less power but perform the same or better, which is uh, awesome to see that kind of progress going on. Even things like uh, word processing here, this feels a lot like those other computers did, really fast and zippy, even on uh, involved templates like this one. You can move things around and get a very quick response response to this. This actually feels a lot faster than other Brasswell machines I've used and definitely a lot faster than some of the Atom chips I've used as well. So I'm very impressed with uh, this Apollo Lake architecture and it's really nice to see uh, a really nicely performing device here at 1080p even for uh, some of the more mundane tasks like this. Now, like other mini PCs, these are not gaming powerhouses, so you can run stuff like Minecraft here pretty decently. This is the uh, Java version of Minecraft running with the uh, OptiFine Performance Enhancing plugin, and we get frame rates around 30 to 45 frames per second, give or take. Good enough to play stuff on, but uh, certainly not as good as what you would get on a uh, more dedicated gaming PC with a faster processor, but certainly playable. Now, because this is the first Apollo Lake processor I'm playing with, I figured I would try Grand Theft Auto V. Unfortunately, I can't get it to work with my uh, video capture hardware here, so I have to shoot the screen, but uh, we're getting frame rates around, I don't know, 12 frames per second or so, uh, running at 800 by 600, but again, it just shows you the progress we're making with some of these uh, low-powered chips here. It is able to actually run things that we really couldn't run at all before. It's just not all that playable. Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is that this does not have Bluetooth built in either, so you will need to get uh, some kind of dongle to get that to work. They do have dual Bluetooth and Wi-Fi dongles that I would suggest getting for this, but it only comes with the Wi-Fi dongle, not the dual purpose one. Now, the kinds of games that run well 
well on these mini PCs are uh, more games like this one. This is uh, Ikaruga, which is a uh, older shoot 'em up that used to uh, run initially on the Dreamcast, but is also available on the Steam Store. This runs at a full 60 frames per second. It really actually runs pretty nicely on here. Uh, other games like Shovel Knight will also work really nicely on here too, but uh, things like Counter-Strike Go and other games that are more modern uh, don't work as well. My rule of thumb typically with these computers is to uh, take uh, games from 10 years ago back and you'll probably have a pretty good experience or newer games that are more 2D platformers or something that don't push the hardware too hard. Uh, but they do really work well as game streaming devices. So if you use Steam in-home streaming or Moonlight or one of those applications, uh, you will have a pretty good experience streaming games to it. You just won't run them all that great natively on it. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 2,246, which puts it at the top end of the uh, mini PCs we've tested. Of note is the Shuttle XPC Nano we looked at not too long ago that is powered by a Skylake 3205U processor. That is, again, the higher-powered version of the Celeron chips. And uh, that one does a little better graphically, but uh, this one does a little better on the CPU side because it has a quad-core processor versus a dual-core uh, on that shuttle PC. Also of note is the GPD Win that we looked at recently, which is that little handheld Windows computer powered by a Atom X7 chip. That actually consumes less power than this chip does, and the performance is almost identical uh, on this test to that. So it gives you an idea as to uh, where this falls in line with other uh, similarly priced and powered PCs. I also figured I would give the Dolphin emulator a try, and I'm getting very good frame rates on here. Again, in line with some of those other uh, higher-powered Celeron devices we looked at two years ago. It really matches up quite nicely with those. So I think it's not bad for uh, emulation. You will see some laggy moments here or there, and of course we are running at uh, the native resolution here without a lot of fancy settings applied, but uh, it's good enough for doing this kind of stuff, and I think uh, you'll have a pretty decent emulation experience on here. I don't think the PlayStation 2 emulators will run as nicely as this does, but I think you can go from the GameCube all the way back through the 90s, 80s, and 70s uh, with something like this. And this also performs exceptionally well as a Kodi box. So we've got our usual testing files here, a, a HEVC 4K file that is, uh, is playing back just fine with no drop frames and uh, very smooth frame rates. This is a very good test because it's got a lot of motion in there. It seems to be keeping up well with that. I also have our Blu-ray MKV test here, the Star Wars movie that we always play back. Uh, this is running also very nicely with no drop frames either. I hooked it up to my home theater nook earlier this evening and I was able to get uh, DTS HD, Dolby True HD, and it also I uh, was able to activate 24p mode on my television without any issues whatsoever. So very impressive little home theater box, but you will hear the fan running, especially if you're in a smaller space. So that is one consideration to make on this one, but it did check all the boxes for me as a home theater device. And now for a few geekier tests on this device, we're going to start with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test on its SSD. Uh, we're getting write speeds around 170 megabytes per second and read speeds around 440 megabytes per second or so. I also ran the Crystal Disk Mark Test and got uh, 5.8 megabytes per second when doing random reads and uh, 66 megabytes per second when doing random writes. So not a bad SSD, kind of on the slower side of things and I would really love to see a configuration of this computer without the SSD installed uh, so you can pick one out for yourself but uh, this test does give you a good idea as to uh, what its bus is capable of outputting especially on the read side and it looks like it can uh, push a lot of data pretty fast. And if you're curious, the BIOS screen does seem to be pretty Spartan on this one. There is not a lot to configure on it, so you don't have a lot of the options that you might get on some of these other mini PCs. Uh, you do have some of the security settings here, but not much else actually, so there isn't much to uh, configure or break, I guess, as a result of that. But if you are a BIOS tweaker, uh, you will not find many options here. And of course, the big question is, will it run Linux? And at the moment, the answer is no, because that's all I get when I try to boot it up. I did try a whole bunch of different uh, ISOs and all these different things, but I could not get this thing to boot up Linux just yet. I have seen this before with these mini PCs. Typically, they aim to get them working with Windows first, and then a BIOS update uh, comes out at some point later to support other operating systems. So at the moment, at least with Ubuntu here, I could not get Linux to boot. I, I will try a few other uh, distributions to see if I have better luck, but I'm not going to be all that confident that they will work. This is typically a uh, Windows-focused device to begin with, and then eventually they'll try to get some other OSs up on it. So that is the Voyo V1 Mini PC. They call it a VMAC on their uh, boot-up screen here, but it's definitely going to be found online as the V1. I want to thank GearBest for sending this along to the show. I'll put an affiliate link down below in the video description for it. They've been getting us a lot of this cool stuff right when it comes out. 
Uh, so I think it's a good device, actually. It really does check all the boxes for me insofar as performance is concerned and features. So it does uh, home theater really well. We get all the video modes that I want, most specifically 24p. It was able to play back movies at 4K very nicely, also on my uh, 4K TV in the other room. Uh, we also get all the audio formats like DTS HD and Dolby True HD. So all the things that a home theater person might want, it does. It just has a fan, though, that you'll be hearing uh, running in the background during quiet scenes, unfortunately. Uh, but it does have very consistent performance because of that fan. So we we're able to run Dolphin at a consistent frame rate, as you saw, and you can do a whole bunch of other retro emulation on it. Uh, indie games and other uh, less strenuous games should also work very well on here too. So for casual gaming, I think it'll be a pretty decent little device. Uh, it's got the full Windows license also, which is also a good thing to see on one of these devices too. So all those things are really uh, decent here. Uh, just be careful though, because as I mentioned at the outset, Voyo does not have very good international customer support. So you may be uh, stranded at some point in the future with it, but uh, for around two or three hundred bucks, I think it's a pretty good deal, and I'm hoping they come up with a bare bones version that uh, will cost a little less and allow you to add on your own RAM and uh, storage to it, so that way you can get in the door with maybe less of a risk, uh, and then if something breaks, you can always pull the RAM and the uh, hard drive out that you have chosen and put them into something else down the road, but I'm very excited to see where Apollo Lake goes. I'm very eager to see uh, what other devices we see over the course of the year and see how those perform against this one does. This will be kind of our baseline uh, device to compare everything else against. So if you have any questions, leave them down below in the video description or in the comment section. And this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.